Because when your body is in a state of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, there is no space for us to feel inspired, to dream, to expand. It's a lot harder since all of our energy is going into keeping us afloat. Hello, hello. Welcome to Whole and Unleashed. And we had just wrapped up season two a couple weeks ago. And I wasn't sure when I would come back for season three. But then I realized as I got some rest, moved through the motions, moved through all the energetic shifts that's been going on in the past few weeks, I realized my podcast episodes don't have to be 40 minutes, 50 minutes, an hour, two hours long. I can do a five minute episode if that feels align if there's something that I'm feeling pulled to share. So I'm trying something out right now. And later I'll bring back the podcast um, guest episodes. But for now, let's try this short, easy bite-sized format. And the reason I'm here today is because there's been a question that I've been noodling on for a while. I often get asked, what's the one thing that help you the most during your transition. I'm talking about career life transition. And my answer is probably not what you'll expect. It might even sound a bit of a cliche because it wasn't just one thing. You know, the one magical key that unlocked everything to fall into place. And perhaps we look for that one thing to feel more stable and secure. Perhaps hearing about how somebody did it gives us hope that it's doable for us. And I too look for that something that would lead me to, you know, quote unquote, success. I enrolled in countless online programs, believed in the promises of shortcutting my way into success so I could justify my rationale for leaving that life behind, you know, the comfy, cushioned corporate life. And I'm not saying that those strategies don't work, but they were on the technical side. While having examples of what others have done can be helpful, I wasn't dealing with what was below the surface. What I needed was something entirely different. And a bit of context. When I left my corporate nine to five, it wasn't on a whim. It was from years of overextending myself, getting continuously sick and burning out no matter how I change my habits and lifestyle. Because in my particular case, it wasn't about my habits. It was the environment I was in. It was no longer for me, but I clung on to it because it was all I knew, because it represented safety. And little did I know how dangerous that would become. It wasn't until insomnia and overexhaustion caused me to fall off a flight of stairs as I was going to work that I realized how bad things were. And you're probably thinking, did I end up going to work? Yeah, I walked straight to work. (laughs) A little bit shock. But it was because I was so used to coping that I didn't realize I was operating in survival mode. When you're in survival mode, you don't have much space to thrive. Whenever our nervous system is on overdrive, our stress response gets activated healing our body's natural functions are on pause as we're flooded with excess adrenaline to ensure we have the energy to sprint fight if danger presents itself and sometimes that's needed but a lot of the stress that we feel nowadays is related to work is the anxiety of being exposed to you know very traumatic happenings around the world to list a few examples And it does send us on the state of like, our body not feeling safe. And we're not meant to be in that state in long term. It's not sustainable. I found out later that as much as my mind felt fine, my body was not. It was still very much on high edge, on high alert. Because I had gotten so used to the adrenaline that amplify root pressure, plus the sacral of working nonstop that the opposite felt like a threat to my body. I had to essentially teach my body how to relax again, to nourish it, to tend to the withdrawal of that environment. 
And transitions aren't just stepping from one point to another. It's a gradual process of unbecoming. And in between, a lot gets brought up to the surface that needs to be confronted, released, healed, And like career change, ending relationships, moving houses, moving through grief, any kind of loss, any kind of change can be quite disruptive to our nervous system and psyche. Some other examples include, you know, childcare, pregnancy, going through pregnancy and then taking care of your kid, any sort of disruption in your routine, noise pollution if you live in a city, stress at work, confrontations, family relationship conflicts, dietary health imbalances, skin problems, you know, there's a long list of it out there that really disrupts our sense of <laughs> of, of self. It, take us, it takes a toll and reduces our capacity to show up. These little things that we see people dealing with doesn't mean it does not take a toll on us. Doesn't mean it is how things are supposed to do. It's just been normalized. Because when your body is in a state of fight, flight, freeze, or fawn, there is no space for us to feel inspired, to dream, to expand. It's a lot harder since all of our energy is going into keeping us afloat. So what I needed then weren't strategies on how to build a successful online business. Instead, I needed to connect to myself, a space to process what I was holding, to feel, to ground so I could move through all the trauma, the stress that I had been holding for years. Because we often underestimate how much we're dealing with. In order to expand and grow, we need to have a strong foundation to be able to build upon. And once in a while, the foundation needs to be ripped from the inside out, while other times, simple tools and practices can help us strengthen it. Our foundations are... It's not just static. It's something that we keep nourishing and building and rebuilding over and over again. So no matter where you're at, the one thing that helped me the most personally is to soften, to tune inwards, to tend to my immediate needs. Asking myself questions like, what is is going on with me right now? What am I holding? How does my body feel right now? What am I craving for? Do I need support? Who can I lean on? You know, some simple questions that sometimes I have an answer for, other times I don't. And it's okay, just holding the question can be powerful enough. And sometimes something as simple as like, you know what? My body wants to rest, even though I still have some stuff to do. I'm going to take a bath. Making that decision to nourish ourselves can help us nourish our energy back in return. And of course, you can continue to keep learning, researching strategies if that sounds exciting to you. Notice the intention behind it. It's not one or the other. But notice if you're getting distracted by all the solutions that... You know, certain people or experts are positioning to help you change your life completely. Notice if those strategies are coming from a place of curiosity or from like, something's wrong with me, help fix me. That's a different kind of mindset, right? And just tending to your needs because your needs are unique to you and they change and evolve along with you. So I wanted to weave in some human design elements to ground us into the framework a little bit more if that's helpful. So if you're a manifester and you've been trying to initiate but find yourself unable or with no space to do so, when was the last time you felt peace? Do you allow yourself to feel anger? How do you process that? Do you have a safe space to process your anger? When was the last time you had space to just be with your own energies and notice what you need and tend to those needs? If you're a projector and you've been feeling exhausted, bitter with no aligned invitations coming in, when was the last time you felt truly rested? When was the last time you had space to be by yourself? Have you been able to prioritize and recognize what your needs are and tend to them? 
If you're a generator and you ain't got no satisfaction, but a lot of frustration pent up, are you aiming this frustration at yourself? How can you release that? When was the last time you channeled your energy into something that brought you joy or fascinated you for the sake of it? If you're a manifesting generator and you've been feeling overwhelmed, overextended, and guilty about taking on too much, what can you release that is no longer serving you? You don't have to finish everything you start. How can you give yourself some flexibility when possible? And when was the last time you allow yourself to be guided by your curiosities, by a fun challenge, and allowing yourself to get lost in that? If you're a reflector and you're feeling disconnected, not yourself, when was the last time you felt a sense of surprise? Have you had space to reflect, to connect with others and yourself? What identities can you release that are no longer serving you? What might be feeling disappointing right now? How can you listen to the wisdom behind that disappointment? And as usual, these are just a starting point. These questions, these contemplations, there are so many other elements in your design, current lifestyle and circumstances that come into play. Do I really... The idea is really to notice what's going on with you right now and how can you tend to that before we try to figure out our roadmap ahead, our five-year plan, our 10-year plan. How can you tend to your need right now and make more space to cultivate, to nourish yourself? And if you're feeling pulled to explore more, go to www.wholeandunleashed.com. Thank you for being here. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Align and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.